Happy Bible Bedtime, Season 3, Episode 145. And tonight we are going to listen to Leviticus 11. I'm Dana, and I'm your host here at Bible Bedtime. Tonight's episode of Bible Bedtime is sponsored by Sharp Shooter. It's a small business that specializes in helping nonprofit organizations prepare for and seek grant funding. If you would like to learn more about Sharpshooter, you can take their free, no strings attached, grant readiness assessment. And you can find that at www sharpshooterok.com Again, that's sharpshooterok.com I'll have the link in the program description. And remember that nonprofits make the world a better place and Sharpshooter can help. And we appreciate the help that Sharpshooter provides Bible Bedtime. Here at Bible Bedtime, if this is your first time listening, I spend each episode reading a full chapter of the Bible, and I go in order. In each season, I read through both an entire book of the Old Testament and an entire book of the New Testament. In the first two seasons, I alternated between the Old and New Testament every episode. This season, I'm trying something different, and I'm just reading through Leviticus from start to finish. And when I'm done, I will move on to the New Testament. What do you think about that? If you'd like to give me feedback on this change in programming that we've done, I would love to hear from you. You can send me a message on Facebook or on Patreon. And I read everything that gets sent to me. I pray for those of you who ask me to pray. (laughs) And I appreciate your taking the time to write us a review and give us a rating, as well as joining our Facebook page and interacting that way. Thank you so much. This season, I have spent some time profiling the nations in the world where people are not listening to Bible bedtime. I am incredibly blessed that most nations in the world show that there are listeners. And uh, that is beautiful to think about how we all come together in one place (laughs) even though we don't know each other we are all brothers and sisters in sharing the same God but in highlighting those nations that don't listen or maybe don't have access to Bible bedtime, I have had the honor and the pleasure to learn more about some nations I wasn't familiar with. Tonight, I want to give a shout out (laughs) to uh, the nation, well, it's officially the Kingdom of Eswatini. It's formally known as Swaziland. Now, the Kingdom of Eswatini is a tiny, tiny country in the southern, 
of the southeastern part of Africa. It is the very last absolute monarchy in the continent of Africa, and it they do have a king, uh, but they also have a senate and a house that help make the laws, and the people who serve there are elected. Now, the kingdom of Eswatini is not only small, but it is a very poor country, and a lot of the people who live there face health issues. In fact, nearly one third of the adults in the kingdom of Eswatini are positive for HIV. They also have a lot of problems with tuberculosis. Because of that, the life expectancy is low. And because of that, <laughs> the population of Eswatini is young. Um, more than one third of the population is aged 14 years or younger. That is a very large portion of children. And although I know the nation has issues and that we will pray for Eswatini, it brings me so much joy to think about the amount of laughter and playfulness that must take place in that nation. Please, over the next few days, join me as we pray for our brothers and sisters in Eswatini. It's time to settle down and go to sleep. Everything that you have been using to distract yourself, whether it's an electronic device or a book or a toy, whatever it might be, it's time to put that away and focus on ending your day. A great way to end your day is to develop habits. And we talk about that a lot here on Bible Bedtime, but you can develop a habit of taking some deep breaths and snuggling into your bed and feeling the weight of your body on your bed and feeling how the darkness embraces and holds you just like gravity and just like God. Now, if you're comfortable doing so, join me in taking three deep breaths. Here we go. One. Two. Leviticus 11. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Say to the Israelites, Of all the animals that live on land, these are the ones you may eat. You may eat any animal that has a split hoof, completely divided, and that chews the cud. There are some that only chew the cud, or only have a split hoof, but you must not eat them. The camel, though it chews the cud, does not have a split hoof. It is ceremonially unclean for you. The coney, though it chews the cud, does not have a split hoof. It is unclean for you. 
The rabbit, though it chews the cud, does not have a split hook. Yet is unclean for you. And the pig, though it has a split hook completely divided, it does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. You must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses. They are unclean for you. Of all the creatures living in the water of the seas and the streams, you may eat any that have fins and scales, but all creatures in the seas or streams that do not have fins and scales whether among all the swarming things or among all the other living creatures in the water, you are to detest. And since you are to detest them, you must not eat their meat, and you must detest their carcasses. Anything living in the water that does not have fins and scales is to be detestable to you. These are the birds you are to detest and not eat because they are detestable. The eagle, the vulture, the black vulture, the red kite, any kind of black kite, any kind of raven, the horned owl, the screech owl, the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl, the osprey, the stork, any kind of heron, the hoopoe, and the bat, all flying insects that walk on all fours are to be detestable to you. There are, however, some winged creatures that walk on all fours that you may eat. Those that have jointed legs for hopping on the ground. Of those, you may eat any kind of locust, katydid, cricket, or grasshopper. But all other winged creatures that have four legs you are to detest. You will make yourselves unclean by these. Whoever touches their carcasses will be unclean till evening. Whoever picks up one of their carcasses must wash his clothes, and he will be unclean till evening. Every animal that has a split hoof, not completely divided or that does not chew the cud is unclean for you. Whoever touches the carcass of any of them will be unclean. Of all the animals that walk on all fours, those that walk on their paws are unclean for you. Whoever touches their carcasses will be unclean till evening. Anyone who picks up their carcasses must wash his clothes, and he will be unclean till evening. They are unclean for you. Of the animals that move about on the ground, these are unclean for you. The weasel, the rat, any kind of great lizard, the gecko, the monitor lizard, the wall lizard, the skink and the chameleon. Of all those that move along the ground, these are unclean for you. Whoever touches them when they are dead will be unclean till evening. When one of them dies and falls on something, that article, whatever its use, will be unclean, whether it is made of wood, cloth, hide, or sackcloth, put it in water. It will be unclean till evening, and then it will be clean. If one of them falls into a clay pot, 
everything in it will be unclean and you must break the pot. Any food that could be eaten that has water on it from such a pot is unclean. And any liquid that could be drunk from it is unclean. Anything that one of their carcasses falls on becomes unclean. An oven or cooking pot must be broken up. They are unclean and you are to regard them as unclean. A spring, however, or a cistern for collecting water remains clean, but anyone who touches one of these carcasses is unclean. If a carcass falls on any seeds that are to be planted, they remain clean. But if water has been put on the seed and a carcass falls on it, it is unclean for you. If an animal that you are allowed to eat dies, anyone who touches the carcass will be unclean till evening. Anyone who eats some of the carcass must wash his clothes and he will be unclean till evening. Anyone who picks up the carcass must wash his clothes and he will be unclean till evening. Every creature that moves about on the ground is detestable. It is not to be eaten. You are not to eat any creature that moves about on the ground, whether it moves on its belly or walks on all fours or on many feet. It is detestable. Do not defile yourselves by any of these creatures. Do not make yourselves unclean by means of them or be made unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. Do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves about on the ground. I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore be holy because I am holy. These are the regulations concerning animals, birds, every living thing that moves in the water and every creature that moves about on the ground. You must distinguish between the unclean and the clean, between living creatures that may be eaten and those that may not be eaten. Tonight I will read from Proverbs. It will be Proverbs 3, 27 through 35. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow. I'll give it tomorrow when you now have it with you. Do not plot harm against your neighbor who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Do not envy a violent man or choose any of his ways, for the Lord detests a perverse man but takes the upright into his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but gives grace to the humble. 
The wise inherit honor, but fools he holds up to shame. And as we do in each episode, I will close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 